Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day so far. My name is Tim Fayola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today we're gonna to do something really cool. We're gonna do a demonstration of a visualization of Nautobot's GraphQL schema using this cool website that um, is called GraphQL Voyager. And uh, I have to credit one of my counterparts here at Network to Code, Damian Garros, for pointing me to this uh, visualization engine. So first of all, uh, I'm gonna be demoing off of the demo.notabot.com public site. So I encourage you to follow along or do this on your own time. You'll be working with the same data I am. So let's first go to demo.notabot.com. Go ahead and log in using demo and the password is notabot. All right. Let's head on down to the GraphQL interface. All right, we'll get rid of all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay, so first what we're gonna examine here is the, uh, the, the GraphQL schema that's presented in the Nautabot Graph IQL interface. So if you click this documents button up here, this docs button, it takes you to the GraphQL schema. And the schema starts with query. And if you click on query, you can see all the things you can query for and all the attributes of those things. For instance, sites, you can query for all these different attributes for sites. If you scroll down a bit, uh, you have devices and all these attributes for device. And as you can tell from my scroll bar, this is quite an extensive list. Okay. What would be really awesome is if we could visualize all these objects and how they relate to each other. And we're gonna use this GraphQL Voyager to do that today. So um, let's start with that process. So the first thing we have to do, and if you let me point out the URL, the URL is apis.guru slash GraphQL dash Voyager, right up here. So if you head to that website, and if you click on change schema, and there's all these presets you can deal with, but let's go to the introspection section. And you'll notice this, uh, this button down here called copy introspection query. Let's do that. So it's copied to our clipboard now. So what do we do with that? Let's head back to the graph uh, IQL interface on Nautobot, and we're gonna paste this query into the uh, query section here and go ahead and hit play. And this has returned to us the graph, uh, the GraphQL schema for not a bot. So we're gonna click in this uh, right hand side where our results are and select everything and select copy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna paste that introspection here. All right, so we've done that. Now here's the cool part. So if you hit display after a short period, this is the visualization of the GraphQL schema for Nautobot. And to make things easier during this demo, I'm gonna click on the lower left here. I'm gonna click sort by alphabet to make things easier to find as I go through this. All right, a couple things to note. Uh, first, let's go ahead and zoom in on the left-hand side here. Zoom in. We see this top-level query object, just like we saw in the, uh, the Nautobot GraphIQL interface. And these are all the different things you can query for. Whoops, if I can hold the zoom, I'll scroll down. These are all the different things you can query for. So let's go ahead and take a look at the IP address. Here is the IP address uh, object here. And sorry if I cut out earlier, uh, this thing is kind of tough to demo really uh, because it's such a huge visualization. So the navigation and zooming sometimes gets problematic. So anyway, back to the task at hand, let's look at the IP address type here in the query field. So if you go ahead and click on IP address type, That takes you to the IP address type object. And within the object here, you see a bunch of different attributes associated with the object. So this is still kind of a 
big ball of spaghetti on my screen here. You can clarify that by clicking on the IP address type box on the object box. And now what that does is it highlights the specific objects that are associated to it and what attributes of those objects are in fact associated with, in this case, the IP address type. So let's look at an example here. Let's look at an outgoing relationship. Um, let's look at the primary IP4. And you'll notice that there is a line egressing from the primary IP4 uh, and going somewhere. So we can figure out where in a couple of ways. First, we can click on the line itself, and that will give us a red line leading somewhere. And I'm not going to try and scroll too much because it's kind of a nightmare uh, during a live demo. But we know where that's going because it's also written right here. It's going to the device type. So if I click on device type, that will take me to the end of this arrow, which happens to be right above it. Uh, so the IP4 from the IP address type uh, is associated to the device type. Uh, that is an outgoing relationship from the IP address to the device type. Uh, for an example of an incoming relationship, um, let's go ahead and click on, under device type, let's look at the I primary IP6. You click on this, and uh, the red line leads right back to the IP address type, which has an IP6, a primary IP6 field. So that's an example of an incoming and outgoing relationship and how you can understand the mapping between the two visually. Uh, for instance, let's look at the, uh, let's kind of wing it here and look at the tenant uh, attribute under the device type. Let's go ahead and click on this line. Um, and then just let's go ahead and click on tenant type to take us to the end of that arrow. And here's the tenant type. And Notice that as I am moving from object to object, uh, the, the fields over on the le left-hand side here are also being updated with the newly selected devices fields. So if I click on tenant type, the tenant type becomes the primary uh, field over here, and you can see the different associated objects. So using this visualization, if you zoom out, you can get an understanding of how many other things you're interest your thing you're interested in touches and you can drill down and look at specific relationships by clicking on these inbound and outbound arrows um, to see how the different things are uh, related to each other so that concludes this demo it's a quick demo uh, thank you for watching now in the comments below if you've used graphql voyager or you have a workflow around it, especially with Nautobot, I'd love to hear about it in the comments because this might be something we want to build on and create more content on in the future. Again, this is Tim Fayola for Network to Code. Have an awesome day.